Okay, hello guys, warm welcome from our new record room. So we just moved over and are pretty happy about this awesome stuff what we have here. Today we're gonna talk about fuel cells and at my side my good friend and dear colleague Daniel. So Daniel, welcome. G'day mate, good to be back. Good to be in the new studio, it's been a long time making and Ab glad we can do our first video here. Absolutely. So um, we will also send you some photos through LinkedIn and so on. You can have a look in here. You should always participate what's going on here. But today let's focus on our topic fuel cell and on our Unitrain system fuel cell. So the idea is here, what can we do in training for apprenticeship and everything like that in the automotive context in order to explain how fuel cells work in vehicles. What we are using here is our Unitrain system. So this is a complete fuel cell, what you basically see here. Um, we already set the system up. So if you have the system and you are keen about to get to know how you're getting that system into operation, just go to the linked video, which will show the setup of the system. Okay, Daniel, fuel cells in vehicles. It's becoming a big topic now, of course. So fuel cells, if we talk about hydrogen, in, there's actually two different methods that it's being used in modern vehicles now. So one side is the fuel cell. A fuel cell is actually a, a way of creating electricity. So in fact, the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle is a, an electric vehicle with a chance to fill the vehicle up again with hydrogen so that you, it's kind of like a hybrid vehicle almost you're extending the range of the that's the always battery. interesting i think as kind of um, people are a little bit like okay is it an electric vehicle is it a hybrid vehicle what is it exactly well there's actually also the case there's combustion there's hydrogen combustion oh, that's a completely different story yes we're don't mix that up yeah we're seeing that on a lot of um, trucks have that now as well um, but that's not what we're talking about here we're talking about hydrogen literally as a source of energy. So basically, to some degree, we can talk to, to define that a bit. It's like a little bit like a serial hybrid, but where you don't have a combustion engine, which is creating electric energy to charge the battery. It, it, exactly, it's but, kind of like a range extender. Yeah, exactly. So, so, and you don't fuel up with fuel, you fuel up with hydrogen, basically. Exactly. And so that's what we've got here, is we've got a little, obviously, when we look at vehicles with um, hydrogen fuel cells, they have huge amounts of energy within the tanks. This is just the point. So when you just look up the latest Mirai of Toyota, for example, they, they have even three tanks separated all around the car. And um, it's interesting why they do that. So the tanks for hydrogen are under extreme pressure. So hundreds of bars, so thousands of PSI, if you speak that language. Um, that's really a lot of pressure for these tanks and they're actually wrapped in carbon. In what shape do they do you find them at the car? How so they're they look long like? cylinders, smaller. Yeah. So the thing with pressure is you want smaller tanks. The bigger the tank, the more the pressure is. So they're and more no, likely to explode or to And rupture. obviously no edges, but just round, round forms. Exactly. So they've split it out over three on one side for weight distribution, but the other side is to keep them small so the pressure or the surface area is less. So obviously the bigger tank has more surface area inside, which obviously can mean more pressure on that surface if there's... Okay, so we have the tank basically where the hydrogen is going into, mm -hmm. but what else do we have on the car? We said it's basically like an electric car. So we have an electric motor obviously. Obviously, yeah, you've got the electric motor, you've got the inverter running that, then you've also got the battery. The battery? To run that as well. So, and the battery, high voltage battery, of high course. High voltage yeah. battery, and it's much smaller, like a hybrid vehicle as well. Why is that the case? So, obviously, uh, room, there's not enough room within the vehicle once you've got the tank. So, EVs normally have the entire floor is made of the mm. battery. In this case here, we've got one or two or three hydrogen tanks there as well. So, the battery's smaller, but because we're now getting our energy from the hydrogen, there's no need for that larger battery. And it's high capacity basically because you can charge while you drive. What, what is typical exactly. for a serial hybrid basically? Yep. We're still not at the point where the fuel cell can supply the entire energy for the vehicle. We're not quite at that point yet. Um, 
As It'll probably come one day, I guess. So it's more or less also like a buffer, the high voltage battery. Exactly. In between. Especially when you do acceleration, I can imagine, and you yep. need a really high peak current. So that can't, I think the fuel cell is too, too slow on that. And there you need the battery, which can give you quickly electrical energy there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, then we have the inverter as well. Um, the car is getting oxygen, hydrogen from the tank, oxygen from the environment, of course. How is that done at this system? So what do we have here when we have a look at that system? Sure. So we've actually got this here. We're using distilled water. So it's, for this system, it's really important to use distilled water. And we're putting it into this thing called the electrolyzer. So the reason we use distilled water is if, question, you, yeah. if you've used a, a kettle or the dishwasher or something like that, after it's been around for a little while, you see all of the the minerals that um, form on everything. Yeah. So if you do that within this, the minerals will form ah, okay. within the membrane yes. within the fuel cell. And so and that's why it's done. really important to use distilled water. Okay, so, so no tap water here. So we obviously don't want to play with 700 bars worth of pressure in the, in the classroom. So Could be interesting. We use this thing called an electrolyzer. So we've got our software here. Christian, maybe you can just press start on the electrolyzer um, unit there. So this is now, how many amps is that running at? Two. Two amps. So we're actually creating hydrogen from electricity. So from we've got water in here, the distilled water, and we can see here we've got the O2, H2. I need to just spin around so you can see that. But one side is the, the oxygen is coming out, the other side is the hydrogen coming out, and that's filling up into this chamber here going around into the to the tubes that we've got there and then on into the the fuel cell but this guy we don't have at a real car right no so this is just for us to create some hydrogen and in this case oxygen for us to to put into our fuel cell so like we said this one would be replaced at a real car through the hydrogen tanks mm -hmm. and getting the oxygen from the environmental air exactly so what we have here in the middle is a, is a membrane. It's called a PEM membrane. And that's where we're putting the, the, the two gases onto each mm -hmm. side. And we'll show you an animation what happens there. But essentially, you've got the, uh, the molecules passing through and the electrons passing through the membrane. So you're taking the electricity off as they yeah. go through the, the membranes. And the, the oxygen and the water are recombining, and that's what you can actually see on the insides of the, the, the unit here. Yeah, I see. So, water is combined, so oxygen and hydrogen are, are, are being placed into the membrane, and by the time it gets out to the exhaust, it's then recombining into water. And that's perfectly normal. And the reason we have these two here is the gas is being pulled apart or the water is being pulled apart here the oxygen and hydrogen and the electrolyzer here and it's coming out through the um, the liquid through the water and it's building up into this chamber here so we've got the straw and you can see on the the top chamber here we can see we're building up the the water and that's just because the the gas is pushing out okay and creating its its room there the advantage that we have here is so now our lines here, our um, tubes, yeah. are under pressure. So the wa water here is pushing, yeah, okay. creating yeah. pressure into our membrane right here. So again, hydrogen on one side, oxygen on the other, and then we've pushed it into the membrane. Right so here. how is that done on a um, real car when you say like they have to put pressure on it or push it into the fuel cell. So do you have kind of injectors on a real car or how does it work there? Absolutely, so it's not like a combustion engine that's obviously it's in sucking chamber, in, yeah. pulling okay. its own air in. In this one we need to push the air, the gases across the membrane. So you need an external component like a compressor, for example, gets air into it. I mean, when we think about a combustion engine, you have a natural sucking there just because of the piston move, mm -hmm. of course. 
obviously you don't have that here. Of course you have also like compressor or turbocharger on a, a normal combustion engine, but here's something also that you pressurize the air or the oxygen and get that into the fuel cell. And what you actually see is like a high voltage turbo. So there's a turbo running on yeah, high voltage. Yeah, okay, got it pushing the air into the system. So pretty similar like to some combustion engine with you, which use that, for example, the um, Audi Q SQ5. There is a version who's using um, an electric turbocharger for a combustion engine in a bunch of other normal exhaust turbochargers. But here, okay, you have electric turbocharger, which makes sense as mm -hmm. this is an electrical system. Exactly. Which needs a higher, so but this turbocharger is then running on high voltage or on what voltage level? Because sometimes they have a 48. 48 volt. Ah, okay. Yeah, there's 48 volt ones that are, that are running that as well. Cool. Well, I just want to have uh, just one question here. When you see now we're talking here of a fuel cell. Mm -hmm. So that sounds to me pretty similar, like when we're talking about a high voltage battery and speaking there about the lithium ion cell. So now obviously there you have a stack of cells. Mm -hmm. How is that done now in a car with a fuel cell? We're speaking of a fuel cell, but um, do we have maybe also a stack of fuel cells yeah, in the a, car? That's a good point. So the cell in this case is the element which is actually um, creating that electricity. So from the sides here, we can see that there's also an electrical connection there. Um, and we can even measure what the voltage is here. And if we have a look from above, we can see that we're looking at about 0 0.9 volts mm -hmm. for this cell. So in this case, we have two, yeah. there's two separate cells here. Um, but in a vehicle, you're looking at hundreds, hundreds of these cells put together into a stack. So it's a little bit like the idea of a high voltage battery where you will have a one exactly. lithium iron cell which has like 3.7 volt and you create a higher voltage through the series of parallel connection of those uh, cells. Exactly. Sounds like pretty similar here. It's exactly the same. So it's a matter of building up the, the voltage through series connection yeah. and then building up the capacity through parallel connections right. as well. And just that you get an idea, so for example at the Toyota Mirai they have like 300 of these cells in one fuel cell stack, let's call it that way then. Exactly, so what we've got now, we've actually got a little motor. Just want to point it to that. Right here, so what I'll do is actually connect that up right now. So he's now connecting that to our Unitrain interface, basically what we have here as well. So that's the Unitrain interface and there it's the fuel cell. So you can see here I've got a, a, a bridge wire between the two stacks, uh, the two cells. So we can use one cell but two together we're looking at a little bit higher voltage. And when we would do now like a voltage or current measurement then we would use this side over here as here are our measuring channels. And you can imagine that as a real oscilloscope, amp meter, voltmeter which is just running on the computer. All right, it's already spinning. So spinning around, we can see that. Um, and what's interesting here, we're not actually having any flow going through the cell mm -hmm. at all, through the stack. So it's the, there's pressure within there, but it's not moving. So it's us literally just using the, the gases that are inside the cell okay. right now. So if I was just to open these little connectors, so these are, this is what we call flushing. So we've got these little clamps here, and as you can see, the, the hydrogen come through, and when I open it up here, well, let's see if we can see a no notice a little bit of a speed increase on the motor. Yeah, you hear from the sound. Yeah, and you can see here that my chamber has dropped down. Oxygen as well, it will deplete the oxygen. Well, not deplete it, it joins it, literally joins it back together, as I spoke about before in water. Can I imagine this like, so getting a good flow into the whole system then? Is, is it that about basically? Well in this case we're about f getting rid of the air. So the first time you use the system it's going to have normal air within it and that obviously doesn't run on air. Yeah. It needs the hydrogen and the, the oxygen and so what we're doing is we're flushing out all of the air and replacing it with pure hydrogen and oxygen. And Sounds space. to me a little bit similar like also in the combustion engine there are the method of scavenging where you have both um, valves open that you get a really good yeah, flow or air stream through the cylinders. So exactly. it sounds a little bit similar here. Yep. 
Um, okay, when we come to the end of the car, what are the exhausts basically with the fuel cell now? So of, obviously we don't have a combustion here, so where we have a lot of bad emissions. Um, basically we have oxygen and hydrogen, huh? Sounds like water. Exactly. So obviously, what, what, is it, what is the emission of a fuel cell vehicle? Well, you can actually see it in here, and at times when you've been using the system long enough, you'll need to let the water out. So it's completely normal. It's literally just water comes out the tailpipe. How is that on a real car then when you say water comes out? Does it just spray it does whenever actually. it wants? So if you've ever seen these vehicles driving down the, down the street, on the highway, autobahn, whatever, um, there's sometimes you'll see and it looks like a, a bucket of water has been tipped out. And in fact, what you'll see on some vehicles, there's actually a, a release button inside the okay, vehicle. Okay, cool. So you can press that and it will, so before you park it in the garage yeah. or something like that, you can, or get rid of the water. Service, you can get rid of the water. Cool. I think we had now a pretty good introduction as here is the focus on how the fuel cell works. And that we just get an idea what happens inside the fuel cell because here you have a perfect chance to look inside it and this is what we always do and try to do with this uh, videos give you the chance to look into the things but I think we are just at the beginning when we are talking about the topic of fuel cells and this can be a video out of many regarding this topic I think, so. I think as Daniel is the head of the automotive department at Lucas Nuller I think you also plan to develop more into that direction but of course, yeah, what's the challenge here basically when we're talking about this fuel cell, especially in training and apprenticeship? It is a, it's a really big topic. We get a lot of requests to, to have some sort of training system. This is obviously our introductory training system, but we're looking at how, what is going to be the focus in the future. So obviously high voltage vehicle, an electric vehicle, um, you're going to need the whole process behind it as well. So, um, in, um, being able to shut down a vehicle, making it safe, doing insulation testing, things like that. But on top of that, we're going to have this high pressure tanks. They need to be inspected and um, make sure that everything is okay there. So that's going to go on top of this. So it's at this stage, the training is really focused on the manufacturers. So, yeah. you know, it's mainly the Toyota, Hyundai that are, have the vehicles on the street. They're doing a lot of the training themselves, but there's certainly a huge push for, for hydrogen. Um, we won't go into the politics, no, politics no, about no, no, not if yet, it makes sense or not, because obviously what we didn't go through here before, we, we're using two, two amps of current to create the, um, the, the water, the, the, split. The, the split within the water of hydrogen and oxygen, but it's not 100% efficient. So we loot, there's losses within yeah, the system. Yeah, of course, I see. So it comes down to renewable energies or how you're creating the hydrogen in the first place to, to, to drive it. So we're not gonna go into that. That's I a, think that's a the big topic. question here. But when you just focus the car in that instant now. Exactly, and that's, and the vehicle, the, there is, no matter what happens, there, this, it, this technology is coming mm -hmm. into the market. So we have to be pre prepared for it. Um, regardless of what the politics say. So um, it's good, we're at the level where we're starting to understand it. What we do in those vehicles will come down the track pretty soon, I would say. So if I understand you correctly, right now there's not a real standard. So all the, also the car manufacturers are just in the self-finding phase where it's about what will be the um, way how to deal with those cars inside the workshop. It's Similar to what is now defined for electric vehicles, mm -hmm. basically fuel cell will be your own training topic where you need to define some standards, but they are not finished yet, obviously. No, no. So it's mainly only the, the first awareness of the systems. There's no qualifications that I'm aware of um, on a national level yeah. that talk about hydrogen of repairing of hydrogen vehicles. So it doesn't it's matter mainly manufacturers right now. If we talk about German qualifications, US ASE qualifications, or does UK, the IMI have something? They have the introductory level, but it doesn't go into the so much into the technology, especially not repairing them. Okay, I think that we see right now we are really at the beginning and here, so this is the first of all topics which we can deliver now and which is just set. All the other topics are not set. They need to be defined and be sure as soon as we get information from the car manufacturers and all our partners around the world that this is more clearer, then we will come with another videos and go more into 
more into detail with fuel cells but we are absolutely happy to know what are your expectations here how interesting is that topic for you regarding fuel cells please ask your questions give us your comments what you wish for the future regarding the topic of fuel cells and how important that is for you basically all right cool thanks very much brother my pleasure mate awesome time I would say we stop here for now. Like I said, happy for your comments and we see you soon with another video and on another topic, maybe, well, what, what do we have in planning? Oh, I think many. Aders, EV. Just tell us what you want to see and we will come back with that. Okay, enough. Long story short, have a great day and see you soon. Later.